This afternoon is May the 9th, 2016, and um, something I've been planning for a while, and uh, some of the YouTube viewers have uh, suggested and asked for, and uh, I think it's appropriate. I don't know of any other YouTube video that's done exactly this. What I'm going to do is compare the, uh, the digital, I'm going to use a laser pointer here and see if this helps, this digital device over here to the old analog device over here. Now I'm running it at 10 kilohertz. I'll have to move the camera here a little bit and show you. First of all, as I'm always, I'm using an amplifier. Uh, running it at fairly low power. There's a 10 kilohertz up there. Uh, there's a voltage, that 12 volts up there across uh, 8 ohms up there. There's our THD right there. That's just under a half percent. So we've got something to look at. And we can look down here at these two devices and see the, its harmonic profile uh, <clears throat> on the uh, HP 3580A. There's the fundamental. Second harmonic, third, fourth, and fifth. Over here, same thing. Fundamental, second, third, fourth, fifth right over at the edge. But they're sweeping at the same rate, 5 kilohertz per division. And we see basically the same thing. If you count the, uh, I'm going to use my finger here. If you count from here to here, you get about 60 dB. Here you get 40. You get the same over here, 60 and 40. You know, our noise levels down here at uh, minus 80 dB. The same here. So for 10 kilohertz, it works. Of course, you know, all of us older guys especially like our uh, CRT type instruments and I'm certainly not going to get rid of any of them for a DSO. But I guess all of these instruments are like screwdrivers in our uh, toolbox. Got to have a lot of different kinds of screwdrivers for a lot of different kinds of jobs. So I think they all have a value. I am uh, using a uh, a 10x probe over here on this guy right here just uh, and I've compensated it very carefully just to make sure I don't overdrive anything. One of the good things about a device like this is uh, over a especially a 50 ohm uh, spectrum analyzer is being an oscilloscope it has a 1 meg ohm input and um, you could put quite a bit of voltage in here AC and DC over here. This is the same thing. This device here is a one mega ohm input. I don't know, I don't remember what the maximum voltage is, but it's fairly high. 100 volts or so. I don't remember. AC and DC. You won't hurt it. You go up to a spectrum analyzer like this, this beauty up here, you have to be extremely careful with it because the maximum DC is zero or you'll destroy the front end to it. That's why I use a uh, a capacitor coupler and the absolute maximum input is one watt so that's why I use a 20 dB attenuator so I can accidentally put something out here with some DC on it and accidentally put something out here as high as a hundred watts without smoking my uh, my uh, spectrum analyzer. I want to do that. So there might be some, and of course this is this is all for 50 ohms. And it, it just doesn't work worth a hoot trying to do audio on it. Well, back to uh, what we're what we're here about. Is these two little guys right here at 10 kilohertz, it's just good, in my opinion. Now, if you if you let's zoom in on this guy right here, if we look at the the uh, we look between the fundamental and the second harmonic. We see some noise, a little bit of noise there. You know, second, third, fourth, fifth. If we look over here, we do we do see more, no doubt about it. We see a couple of probably just noise, but we do see something going on right before and after second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth. I, I tend to ignore that, but it is there, and I it's probably telling us the truth. I don't think that you can um, expect to directly replace a uh, an analog instrument like this 
with a uh, an FFT device unless it's something really great. Now I was watching a video earlier where a gentleman has one made by uh, Precision Audio which is uh, I believe the guys that used to work for Tektronix went out and made their own audio stuff and that's you know that's the Rolls Royce of it I don't have any of that Precision Audio stuff but uh, what we have here is a dynamic range of 80 dB 80 dB is a factor of 10 to the 8th power so that's 100 million from here to there or from there to here 100 million up or 100 million down however you want to look at it and I believe that their analyzer which was digital was 120 dB 40 dB more 40 dB is a 10 to the fourth power so it's 10,000 has a factor of 10,000 times uh, more dynamic range um, I kind of want to get into what they were disputing but I'm not exactly sure how to approach it because I don't have that level of equipment or knowledge or understanding of it but um, they were disputing some of the older methods it's, I'll have to show you the, what their website is and you can look at it and determine for yourself that uh, if you think it's worthwhile or if they, you know what they're saying is valid and again I'm not trying to take them on I'm really not but I'm not sure I agree with them either okay this is at one kilohertz I'm gonna stop the camera flip this thing over to one kilohertz and let's look at that okay now I'm driving everything at one kilohertz we have a considerably different profile over here here's our fundamental our second would be right there which I don't see I see a little bit of third fourth fifth sixth seven pretty much nothing the only thing I really see is a third harmonic over here let's zoom in on it so we, can, we do see the detail See, there, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of detail in the harmonics there. Third harmonics, the only thing we can imagine that we actually see. Okay, let's go over to to this beauty. That's different, isn't it? There's our fundamental. There's our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. It, out, it certainly outperforms it there, doesn't it? I'm going to go down to 100 hertz, and uh, th th these devices become a real challenge, and they become very slow as you get the uh, as you start slowing it down. I'm actually still sweeping it just a little bit too fast right there to get the, the perfect. Let's see, yeah, but uh, that sweep right there is still okay. But we got a a very nice uh, descriptive profile there where we don't own the. Uh, on the FFT device. So let me uh, take this guy down to 100 hertz. Okay, now we're looking at a 100 hertz sine wave, and uh, it's pretty hard to compare the two. Let's look closely at this little device. Uh, I do have it sweeping at a slightly different. Uh, time base for each one. This one is at 50 hertz per division. So there's 100 hertz. There's 200. There's its second harmonic. There's its third, which is there sometimes and not there sometimes. Its fourth would be there and its fifth would be there. The only thing I see, I don't see much. I see the second one popping in there once in a while. If we look at uh, this beauty right here we get a completely different uh, perspective don't we and it's very slow but much like the other one that's our fundamental second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and I'm gonna what you gotta watch this thing uh, sweep That draws it out there. There's first, second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. That's about it. Not much to compare to there, is there? This thing does a 
much superior job. I'm going to attempt to make this thing sweep it and display a 10 hertz one. That's that's a little bit of a challenge, kind of slow, but let, let's see if I can I can get there and we can compare the two. Yeah, at 100 hertz, there's there's no comparison. The uh, the HP device, the old HP 8903, genuine analog SA uh, beats it hands down. So let, let me uh, switch once more here. Okay, here it is at 10 hertz. Uh, this one gives us a display pretty quick, and it's really not too bad. There's 10 hertz, there's 20, there's 30, 40. So we see second, third harmonic. This guy over here is doing a much nicer job, but it is, you can, can you see the cursor moving there? It is slow, it's Christmas. I'm not gonna try to put the uh, camera on this thing and have you watch it draw a, a whole trace because it probably takes a couple of minutes to get all the way across. But it's pretty darn good. Look at this. Fundamental, got 10, second harmonic, third, that's 10 hertz, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Isn't that beautiful? It says here that the second and the third harmonic are about the same. The fourth is down a little. If we look back at uh, this guy, it actually says about the same thing. It says our second and third harmonic are about the same. And here's our fourth. So this one at 10 hertz reasonably, reasonably well agrees with this one. So how about that? Now maybe I was doing something a little wrong there in the 100 hertz region. I don't think so. So at 10 kilohertz and up, it seems to do an adequate job. At even at, at 10 hertz, it seems to do a pretty adequate job. Uh, I don't do th these kinds of scans all that often because they're just so slow. But I guess the, I get it here on, on this device. But there, there is the truth. So the old uh, 30 plus year old. Uh, HP 3580A, if it's working, it's uh, it's still quite a nice device, isn't it? Let's see. Look here. Our second, our third is just a little bit higher than our second. We won't we won't start splitting hairs here, but I believe we have that over here too. Yeah. See our our third is. Come on, camera, focus. It's this darn thing to focus. Maybe I'm just a little bit too close for it to figure it out. There we go. Yeah, you can see it's so, oh, I don't know, a couple of dB higher. So that's a that's the best comparison I could reasonably do to them. Uh, comparing the um, FFT function of this little DSO to a, a real uh, high-end audio spectrum analyzer. Okay, here's one other use I've uh, had for the uh, spectrum analyzer, and that is in, in balancing this bridge. You can use the little uh, general radio uh, amplifier or do a better job with the spectrum analyzer. In this case, well, let's see if we can see both of them again. I'm putting in 10 kilohertz and you can see uh, this one very nicely and here it is over here. I've had to amplify it up to a lot of noise and as I uh, as I uh, balance as I turn these two balance knobs on the on the bridge you'll see let's start really we kind of got to look at one at a time. Um, this is the uh, HP, obviously, and I can uh, null this bridge very nicely with that. Right down to back and forth with the R and the 
or the X. See, I can get it right down in the noise. There, there it is, disappeared. I call that balanced. Now, if we look over here, of course, this guy's going to show it balanced too, but then there's so darn much noise. I'll, I'll uh, crank it back up. I'm going to knock them both out of balance again so I can't cheat here so that we can see it again. There it is right there. See it coming up right there? Kind of hard to see, but I'm going to balance it as best I can with these. goes down right, right there, and then I go to the other one. I'm kind of guessing right well I'm just guessing and I can't be looking at the other one because I've only got it hooked to well no actually I can't see both of them but I'm not looking at the other one I promise I'm just looking at the, uh, the, the little FFT scope here yeah, it looks like it looks like that's about as good as I can get it well that's not horrible you know that's actually usable but there it is over here that's that's just the best I could do by staring at this one uh, excuse me staring at the other one not looking at this one I can get it down that low but of course if I look at this one I can uh, get the balance down a whole lot better with the little analog device again right down to the noise I can't do that uh, with the DSO. So that's my five cent evaluation on comparing the um, the FFT function of a DSO to a uh, legitimate spec audio spectrum analyzer. I think they both have their place. Uh, I like, I certainly like some of the functions of this little guy right here. I really do. You just, you just simply press the, press the magic button and, uh, well, the, the signal's so low right now you can't see anything. But you just press the button and everything, it all pops up and you can save it. I haven't tried printing yet. It's got a print function here. I don't know if I've got an old, uh, uh, laser jet or not I can plug it into with a, uh, Centronics port. But I'm gonna look around just to see if it works. Anyway, there it is, for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you.